Hey guys, it is Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing and I'm here for a Top 5 Wednesday. So if you don't know already, Top 5 Wednesday is a Goodreads group hosted by Lainey over at Ginger Reads Lainey and it is just a really good group and I would recommend anyone to join it and uh, take part in it when they can because it's just lots of fun. So this week's topic is banned books and at first I was like, I can't do this topic because I haven't read any banned books as far as I know. And then actually this morning I was actually looking at the lists that um, Lainey had posted onto the discussion group and I actually realised that yes I have read banned books and it completely blew my mind because some of these books I just can't believe are banned. Um, so the first one that I'm going to talk about is is a book that I did know was banned. I've known that it was banned for a long time and every time I remember that it was that it was or still is a banned book, I'm not sure if it still is banned um, in various places, which is Harry Potter and I just think it's insane that this was banned, that children were not allowed to read this. I think it's, it was banned because of magic and because of sorcery, I'm not really sure but um why would you ban this i think this is just such an excellent book for children to read about good and bad people and triumphing over evil and you know it goes through so many different things that children will deal with like crushes and friendship and fights with friends and making up with friends and forgiving people and it's just it's just such a good book and I think it's really important for children to read books like this and for, for it to be banned is just insane and I think it's just crazy. Um, so yeah, that is going to be one of my choices for this week, definitely. The second book that I'm going to talk about that has been banned is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. Um, I think this was banned, it was part of a book list on in a freshman um, year in a school and it was banned because of the talk about sex and homosexuality and the use of alcohol and drugs in the book and um I think that's as far as I know that's why it was banned but I think it's just completely insane that a book like this would be banned because I think this kind of book is very important um that it deals with mental health issues as well as other things it deals with you know not potentially coming out as gay but you know being able to deal with your sexuality as well um and then I just think different characters in this could be very easily identifiable with other people, especially young people, um, that they could identify with these characters and see themselves maybe in the book and the tale in the book can could help them maybe not feel so alone in different ways, whether it's because they're gay and haven't told anyone or because they're dealing with mental health issues or they're just feeling very alone and depressed. And yeah, I just think that it's insane that some books like this are banned and I think it can have a very negative pe effect on the people that don't get to read it because of that when the book and the characters in the book could actually end up becoming lifesavers in a way and um, I think it's really sad that these books are banned and I think it just should be like I think banning books should be banned if you ask me because I think it's completely insane and it just shouldn't it shouldn't be allowed at all. The next book I was completely astounded to see that it had been banned from a library I think and it is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green and the reason this was banned because it had two teenagers dealing with cancer and having sex and that's why it was banned. What? Like why? Why would you ban a book because it has teenagers with cancer and that they have sex? I mean like it's as if people like are saying that well that never happens in real life so it should be banned in this book. Because, you know, teenagers don't get cancer and teenagers never have sex. That's just not a thing. Like, it's just, it's just like, I can't even, like, properly convey all my thoughts about all these books being banned because it's just completely just, I just don't understand it at all. I just can't understand it. And it's just so silly. It's just so, so silly. And, like, I don't know. I'm sure that there's people who, teenagers, who have gone through similar things, whether they have had other halves who have had cancer and have died or have had cancer and have lived, and other teenagers in very precarious states in their health who've decided, who've fallen in love and possibly had sex, and they see themselves in these books, and they're happy because it's their story that has been told. And not to mention that this story was inspired by a girl who did have cancer and she did die. So, it's as if banning this book is almost like a slap in her face to her legacy, I guess, and to to what she inspired, like, and it's just insane. It's just completely insane. Like, why would why would someone ban this book? Like, it's not like it's particularly controversial as far as I know. Like, 
The next book that I'm going to talk about is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I actually wasn't surprised to see that this was on the ban list. I read this recently and while I wasn't blown away with it the way some people are, I definitely felt a connection with the story in it and there, there's a lot of things I could say about this book and about why I'm sure it was banned and I'm sure just the story in it, the story women not having control of their bodies and women being used as vessels for babies and their use deemed, they've been deemed useless once they either have had a baby or they can't have, they're deemed to not be able to have children and just thrown on the roadside um, and you know women being told to cover up and you know constantly told they have no rights and that they're worthless and I feel like it's basically history repeating itself in a way um, in this book because obviously women have been treated very very poorly for a long long time um, and in many places in the world we still are and even in the the first world we are still being treated badly we are women are still being assaulted on a daily basis women are still being raped women are still not being paid the same amount as men we deal with everyday sexism all these different things and I find the banning I feel that find the banning of the handmaid's tale quite offensive to me if I speak plainly and I'm not sure if if I'm speaking a little bit controversially by saying all that but I just feel like I just feel like it, it being banned is almost taking away something that many women would have found powerful in those words and maybe particular men I don't know whether it was a man that deemed it to be banned but I feel like there would have been a group of people that might have been afraid of the power that story might have had with particular groups of women um or young women and the ideas that it could give um and yeah I think I think it just it's just something that really bothers me a little bit that, that it was banned but again it didn't surprise me that it was banned and I do think it's an important story that people should read because I think it is a very very powerful story and while the writing is a little bit you have to get used to the writing you have to get used to the story I think the message that is in it is very powerful and people should read it. And the last book that I'm going to talk about is a book that is actually very dear to me. Um, I don't have it but I got it from the library when I was younger and it is Forever by Judy Bloom. And this book basically tells the story of a teenage girl meeting a boy, they become boyfriend and girlfriend and she decides that she is going to have sex with this boy for the first time and she's going to lose her virginity to him. And I read this book when I was quite young, I was 13, I was either just gone 13 or kind of halfway between 13 and 14 when I first read this book and then I think I read it again when I was 15 because I actually really really liked it and I can understand in particular why maybe parents or teachers don't want this book to be read because it can be it's quite graphic like not really graphic but it can it could be deemed kind of graphic in terms of sex and body parts and how they work and how they work in sex and different things like that but I think it was really, really important for me. And I think it, it is, even though it's quite an old book now, I think it would still be very, very important for young women and young men to, to read about. Because I read this when I was, as I said, when I was quite young. I wasn't, I was just a very young teenager, 13, 14. And I think that it gave me a very, very healthy um, look on sex and having sex for the first time and being completely ready to have sex um I think it's really really important for a young person to feel ready both physically and emotionally for sex and I think that because of the fact I read this book when I was quite young I always had a very healthy very healthy just thoughts about all of this and about how I was going to deal with it when I got to that stage where maybe I was ready to to do that and I was and I waited until I was completely ready until I was completely in love and again when I did I made sure I was 100% safe and that on both parts that you know there was not there nothing was going to happen that would well you know as far as we could make it that <laughs> that there would be no consequences um as like a baby but uh <laughs> you know I I really feel that this book really really is one of those reasons why I had such a healthy outlook on it and I think every child should have that every young person should have that kind of look and I think if people did have that kind of education that this book gave me there would be less teenage pregnancies and there would be less you know uneducated people about sexual health and about people having sex and yeah like I think it's just it just needs to be I think it's just a book that really needs to be read and it shouldn't be banned and 
I think it should almost be a book that is giving, given to teenagers at a certain age by their parents and say, read this, tell me what you think about it, keep it in mind, keep the story in mind, and yeah, like, I think, and it's very realistic, it's a book as well, because it's not saying that once you meet someone you're going to be with them forever, it's saying you can meet them and you can fall in love with them, but that doesn't mean that you're going to love them forever, but the time you're with them is going to be special, and it will be special to you, and you know, you can look back at it and think it to be special, and yeah, I just really love this book, and I don't think it should be banned, and yeah, let me know what you think, let me know if you read that book, and whether you feel the same as me, um, on any of the books as well, and what banned books you have read, and what you think about them, and I will see you guys again next time.